Greetings one and all, and thank you so much for joining us for the third session of our Living Legacy Project 2023 Education Series. Tonight we'll be celebrating and examining the role of music in the modern labor movement. So sit back and uh, have a tasty beverage. I'm going to start with a song that uh, I learned years ago, thinking that it was part of the modern labor movement. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Only to find out that it was actually written in the 1800s. Feel free to sing along. You'll have lots of music tonight. Well, why don't you work like the other folks do? How the hell can I work when there's no work to do? Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out, revive us again. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out, revive us again. Now, why don't you say? All that money you burn. Well, if I did not eat, I'd have money to burn. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out, revive us again. Oh, 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 oh. Well, if I ever get all that money I burn. To work he must turn Hallelujah, I'm a bum Hallelujah, bum again Hallelujah, give us a hand out Revive us again oh, Hallelujah, I'm a bum Hallelujah, bum again Hallelujah, give us a hand out Revive us again oh, 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 oh. She's a good friend of mine. So tell me, why am I starving out on this bread line? Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out, revive us again. Oh, oh, oh. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you who are joining us, perhaps for the first time. And if you are joining us for the first time, then I say welcome. And to those who have joined us before, thank you so much for joining us again. Here is a song that uh, has been around for a long, long time. As you know, the issue of labor and work and uh, of voter uh, of workers' rights has been with us for a long time, since before our nation was even a nation. And uh, we're going to name the mute John there. And uh, this song, No More Auction Block, it's a song by those who had seen the coming of freedom at the end, toward the end of the Civil War. And they were beginning to run to Union Army forces to become contraband 
because their work had been stolen from them for over 150 years. No more auction block for me. No more, no more. No more auction block for me. Many thousand gone. No more master's call for me. No more, no more. No more master's call for me. Many thousand gone. No more driver's lash for me. No more, no more. No more driver's lash for me. Many thousand gone. No more mistress call for me. No more, no more. No more mistress call for me. Many thousand gone. No more peck of corn for me. No more, no more. No more cup of rice for me. Many thousand gone. No more auction block for me. No more, no more. No more auction block for me. Many thousand gone. Many thousand gone. Many thousand gone, many thousand gone. Tonight we're going to be celebrating and we're going to be examining the role of music in the labor movement. And we have some wonderful, amazing guests with us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Reggie Harris. I will be your host for tonight. I'm going to sing this song, which is a song that also has been around a long time. We're here tonight to get some light shined into our lives so that we can continue to be the resource of change in our world and in our nation. Well, this little light of mine, well, I'm going to let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm this little light of mine, well, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Sing it wherever you are, sing way down in my heart, way down in my heart. I'm gonna let it shine, way down in my heart. I'm gonna let it shine, well, way Thank you so much. I am Reggie Harris, a musical education director and uh, one of the co-presidents of the Living Legacy Project. The Living Legacy Project is an organization that was founded years ago to commit itself to teaching the lessons of the civil rights movement, largely through making pilgrimages to places here in our nation where the civil rights movement was so evident and powerful in changing the frame of American and world history. Uh, we take people on pilgrimages, as many of you know, if you have joined us on a five or eight or nine day pilgrimage, where we visit sites of the civil rights movement, we hear the stories of those who then were uh, pilgrims and pioneers in bringing change to America, and also people who are working 
to this very day, because as we know, the civil rights movement is not a thing of the past. It is very much a thing of everyday, present day life. And as one of our missions that we began during the pandemic in year 2020, we began to uh, produce seminars and webinars uh, online uh, to bring aspects of the work and the lessons of the civil rights movement right here into your home or wherever you're watching tonight. So we thank you all who have joined us for some of those. If you have not seen uh, or visited us before, you will be able to find each and every one of those webinars that we have produced on our website at livinglegacypilgrimage.org, the place where you registered for this very webinar. And you will be able to look at uh, all of those musical and panel discussions. And tonight we're gonna add to that because tonight we are really blessed to have two exciting performer, activist, uh, teacher, educator, uh, concerned human beings, artists who are bringing the labor movement into the present uh, with music and with uh, things that they will share with you tonight. Uh, I encourage you to continue to support us. Our work is so dependent on your generosity and we thank you all for uh, contributing um, as generously as you have. We would like to tell you that we are often working on new projects, particularly on connecting ourselves more effectively with younger people, um, particularly through college uh, connections. So stay tuned and uh, We'll give you a little bit more information about that later, but also we want to really get tonight started. I know you've tuned in to hear the music that we have promised you tonight. So tonight we have with us one of my longtime friends. Uh, he is a, uh, a powerful per performer and uh, multi-instrumentalist, a perennial Grammy nominee. Uh, John McCutcheon, uh, is a uh, former president of Local 1000, the Traveling Musicians Union, the union to which I belong. But John has been a storyteller and a musician uh, for a, a long, long time in this nation, setting the standard for not only performance, but for social change through music and the arts. And John will be with us tonight sharing thoughts and, and uh, reflections and also lots of songs on how the labor, how music has help the labor movement in our nation's history. Uh, along with John, we have Lynn Marie Smith. Uh, I know that we had advertised that tonight we would have Elise Bryant. Unfortunately, life is about change and adapting to that change. And so today it became aware of the fact that uh, Elise Bryant uh, was not able to be with us, but she connected us to Lynn Marie Smith who is also a, an amazing performer. She is a native Detroiter, uh, an organizer, and a powerful presence who has been crowned the Tina Turner of the labor movement. And she is bringing it tonight. So we're gonna kick this off tonight right away. Uh, I'm gonna ask John to get us started with a song, followed by a song by Lynn Marie, and then we're gonna have ourselves a good time tonight. So here we go. Hey folks, well first of all, I want to apologize if my video is a little funky. I am here in the mountains of East Tennessee, just outside of Mountain City, Tennessee, where I'm going to be playing tomorrow. But I'm proud to be here. Thanks Reggie, my old brother, for me and Lynn Marie. It's a treat to spend some time with, uh, with you. Um, I think I, I, I want to start by going back to the beginning for me because um, as an 11 year old, my mom made me sit down with her on our tired old sofa and watch the first thing that was broadcast on every channel in our nation's history. Uh, and it was the March on Washington. And it was my introduction to the power of, of word and song. It was also coincidentally my introduction to folk music. Um, I'd never heard of folk folk music and here all of a sudden was Odetta and Peter Paul and Mary and Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and they were singing all these songs. Now the civil rights movement meant a lot in our family. My mother had been a social worker 
And it, we were, I was from a very religious family and it ticked all the boxes. It was a righteous movement. It was led by clergy. It used biblical language and the songs were repurposed hymns. So it had a kind of spiritual heft. But my introduction to the labor movement was I had my first gig. It was a union gig, believe it or not. I had been playing guitar for two weeks. And my, uh, I, I grew up in northern Wisconsin where we don't have air conditioning. We have things called windows. And this was the summertime and I was an enthusiastic singer. And uh, suddenly my dad hollered up that uh, Mr. Fry from down the street was here and wanted to talk to me. And it turns out, he said, I've been hearing you play music. And I said, oh, I'm really sorry, I'll close the one. He says, no, 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 I want to hire you. I've been playing for two weeks and I had a gig. How great was that? The music business is easy. Turns out he was in charge of arranging the, um, arranging the entertainment for the local paper mill workers Labor Day picnic and he had forgotten. And then he heard me sing and he figured he could pay me cheap and buy more beer for the party. So I said, well, I would love to do this, but I only know three songs. And then he gave me the next great lesson I had about the music business. He said, that's fine. Just sing them over and over again. No one's going to be listening to you anyway. Um, and so then he said, but you have to sing this one song. And he handed me the lyrics and he said, it's to the tune of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. You know that song. And I'll give you $25. Well, I lied. I knew the song, but I didn't know how to play it. I went down to the library, got the chords, showed up on Labor Day with my little white Kmart polyester shirt and my clip-on tie. And I played my three songs, and sure enough, nobody was listening to me. And then Mr. Fry gave me the high sign. And I took out my little piece of paper, I weighted it down with a Coke can, and I started singing... When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run. And suddenly everybody stopped what they were doing. And these guys, and it was mostly all guys, stopped and they looked at me. And then they did the most amazing thing. They took the hand of the man next to them. And they stood up. And they raised their hands up and they started to sing. Now, I knew these guys. I went to church with them. They didn't sing in church. These guys did not sing, but by God, they were singing this song. And it was the most unmanly and most masculine thing I had ever seen in my young life, to see these men just abandon themselves to this song. And I was gobsmacked. And I said, I got to learn what this union business is about. living in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1972 when my friend Guy Kerwin called up and said, I have someone here you might like to bring to your school. You have to come out and pick her up. Drove out to the Highlander Center and picked up Florence Reese, who back in 1931 sang this song that has been recorded from everybody from rock musicians to hip hop musicians to folk singers. People writing verses all the time. Come all of you workers, good news to you I'll tell. How the good old union has come in here to dwell. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? Don't scab for the bosses, don't listen to their lies. Us poor folks haven't got a chance unless we organize. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? My daddy was a miner, I'm a miner's son. I'll stick with the union until every battle's won. Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? 
Well, people have been writing so verses for this song for a long time, back in 1989 during the Pittston strike in southwest Virginia and East Kentucky. People wrote verses like this. Uh, my daddy was a miner and I'm a miner's daughter. I'll stick with the union though I'm hell and high water. Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? If you don't want to lose your life down in the old coal mine, I'll see you in the morning down at the picket line. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? Come all of you workers, good news to you, I'll tell. Time to time, we're going to get a little updating on that uh, that visual. So uh, hold that banjo, Which white side are you on, <laughs> Len Marie? You Thank want to John, uh, give us a song, please? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I approach it uh, from a little different angle. Mm -hmm. um, I have found a way to apply a new sound to an old message, as a way to uh, hit the next generation of which we have to pass the, uh, I don't plan on passing the baton, I, pass on, I plan on being there and sharing my experience and help guide uh, that new person. But we're looking forward to speaking to the, the school teacher in Pennsylvania or the Starbucks worker or the next activist, you know, in, this, in Georgia that's gonna need our help. And so I'm, I've taken, uh, I write parodies and I've taken the Bruno Mars uh, Uptown Funk and One of my favorite union. songs. Okay. And I'll put a union spin to it. And uh, it goes like this. Let me get the band here for you. <laughs> here we go. Do. You can clap along. Do. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do. This was for that hard worker, that dues payer, negotiator. This was for that service worker, that activist standing up for peace, organizing, rallying up in the cities with our colors on. Unity is strong, and we'll fight to the nitty gritty. Two hearts, I take Call a union, fire woman. Two hearts, I Solidarity's a requirement. Two hearts, Call our name, you know who we are. We're two hearts, We're moving on a mission, break it down. We're a union, hallelujah. We're a union, hallelujah. We're a union, hallelujah. The union's gonna give it to you. The union's gonna give it to you. The union's gonna give it to you. Tag us down when we're smoking hot. Don't believe us, just watch. Uh, uh, come on, yeah. I said, 
Don't believe it, just watch. 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 Now we have everything that we need to move the movement forward. And here's why. We come from different occupations, bringing leadership and communication to share the common struggles and identify common strategies we can all go by. Building bridges, giving love and charity, power in the workplace, recognizing every face. Jam, jam on it. I say jam, 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 jam on it. Words to the wise. Our strength is our collective energy. Power to the people, the best solidarity. Jam, jam on it. Oh, j -j 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 jam on it. Let's sow the seeds of harmony. Now you sing along if you agree with me. <laughs> oh, 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 don't believe it, just work. <laughs> oh my goodness i'm telling you that now we have <laughs> oh god i love that connection and you know we have already spanned such an amazing time period uh from uh john sharing to your sharing um could you both do me a favor and just Talk a little bit about your personal connection to uh, to unions. Uh, just maybe share a little bit of what your experience has been, um, how you came into union work, and um, and uh, anything you want to share with our audience just about uh, your your own personal connection. John, why don't we start with you? Um, well, I grew up at a time and in a community where kind of the knee jerk reaction, if if there was a strike, was to side with the workers. Hmm. Remember when hmm. Marathon Battery went out? Everybody, you know, just sort of said, "These are our people. These are our neighbors." That's changed a lot. It's 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 been an, an all-out assault since the end of World War II uh, against unions and working people. When I um, fifty some years ago, I came down south from my home in Wisconsin. I was coming down to to find banjo players, which were pretty rare in Wisconsin. And uh, my first stop was the Highlander Center. Hmm. And I met in, in East Tennessee. And if you don't know about the Highlander Center, you need to know about the Highlander Center. Um, and I got involved in, in a bunch of local issues, one of which was um, uh, the, the reform movement in the United Mine Workers, trying to, to throw out the old Boyle administration and bring in Arthur... Uh, Miller and, and the Miners for Democracy. Um, one of the, and I met Nimrod Workman, who was a, a great union man. He was 74 when I met him. I was 21, had no idea that I would be at his 99th birthday party. He was, he worked in the coal fields of Southern West Virginia, worked with Mother Jones and John L. Lewis. He fought in the Battle of Blair Mountain in September of 1921, the largest armed labor struggle. So I was really mentored by a lot of people who had really been on the front lines. And one really seminal moment was Thanksgiving Day, 1973. When I was a 21 year old kid without a Thanksgiving Day invitation, I decided to go up and play for, at the, on the picket line for the Brookside strike in Harlan County. And that was the day I met Cy Khan. I, wow. He was wow. one of the United Mine Workers. Right. And uh, he and I met up that day and we've been best pals ever since done a lot of different uh, union work. And of course, Reggie, you know, you were involved in the formation of Local 1000, the very first 
unlocal, non-geographic local in the in the entertainment world, um, and it was a way to organize people uh, who were were never organized before. Um, but you know, the mu the music I learned, the music I was. The Woody Guthrie songbook was my first guitar instruction book. Wow! Um, and so I was I was fed fed uh, real soul food mm -hmm. from the yeah. very beginning, and just spent a lot of time with work. And that's what I've I've tried to do is, is let their words speak for themselves. Uh, very powerful thing to do because we know the power that music has, and. Uh, and you mentioned the Highlander Center, of course. Uh, the Highlander Center had all kinds of connections, not only in labor, but of course to the civil rights movement. And you know, one of the places were Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and famously, among other people, Rosa Parks, uh, who uh, was energized. And it's uh, where it's... Go ahead. Well, and, and Highlander understood and believed that it wasn't enough to change people's minds. Right. You have to change people's hearts. Right. And culture was the most powerful tool in that. I mean, that's where the song We Shall Overcome just stated. Mm -hmm. Brought in by a group of African-American women who were on strike against the tobacco company in 1947. And a few years later, Dr. King heard We Shall Overcome for the very first time at Highlander. And as he was driving away, he said to his driver, that's a catchy song. <laughs> Had a good ear for a song. Now, Lynn Marie, I know that you have taught at Heidelberg, uh, correct? I had the pleasure of uh, instructing there last year with oh. uh, the Coalition of Labor Union Women. Mm -hmm. uh, it was put on by the uh, Labor Heritage Foundation, of which Elise Bryant is the uh, director. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was an amazing transformational experience, not only for myself, but for all the young women that attended uh, the, the school. Uh, mm. Just an amazing, brother said, amazing time to be living in now and uh, an amazing time to, uh, you know, have this challenge, but opportunity to, to <laughs> make the kind of lasting change that uh, we as working people have fought for for so long and deserve. And how did you personally get pulled into to the labor movement? Well, my uncle uh, was a, heavily involved in the labor movement and was a part of the negotiation team at the Renaissance Center here. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. He bled union. And from the time I can remember, he instilled in me. And I, I remember him saying, organizers are called. Not, not, it wasn't a job. They, it was a calling. I didn't know what that meant at that time. And then I happened to get hired by a visionary, Candy Landers, who was the secretary treasurer of the hotel and restaurants union at that time. Hmm. And she said, you're going to be my organizer and I'm going to send you to meet your counter sister, which was Elise Bryant. Ah, OK. Uh -huh. So she sent me to the Great Labor Arts Exchange, which at that time was held at the uh, George Meany Center for Labor Studies. And I had the opportunity to witness Joe Glazer, the troubadour, a young Ann Feeney, Laurel Blades, John Fromer, and the hits just keep coming and coming. <laughs> John, John McCutcheon, Charlie King. And here I am sitting in the midst of this greatness and I heard a gentleman do a piece and something just, the spirit, not something, the spirit just, it's like I had the Holy Ghost. And at that moment, I was able to see how I could put my music with the art and use it as an organizing tool. And it started out really funny, hmm. a funny, funny thing. And then I saw uh, there was a piece that I did. It rolled out like a, a banner. It was a banner. It rolled out about 12 feet. Mm -hmm. And the resounding theme on it was, let's be union, let's buy union, let's vote union, organize. And it did this bum, 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 like a circus. Right. Okay. And had, okay. Right. And it was a call and response piece. 
And when I saw all the men in the room saying, singing, bum, 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 I said, oh boy, not only is this fun, we can change lives here by planting those seeds of, of, of wisdom and knowledge and just watch it take root. And from there, I was, I was hooked. Then one day the lady, she said, you are the modern day Joe Hill. Then on the other side, I've got, you're the modern labor movement's Tina Turner. Well, so you I certainly have the energy. <laughs> oh, Let's put that together and it's history. You want to hit us with another song? Yes. I'd like to do a piece. Uh, at this time, we were organizing uh, Borders Books uh, for the United Food and Commercial Workers. And they had hired me to come out. Gloria Gaynor was coming to Borders Books. Uh, she had written a book and she was coming to do an autograph signing. So hmm. I decided, hey, let's welcome Gloria. I'll put on the wig. Let's, <laughs> let's get the U-Haul and I'll do a you know, <laughs> I'll do a parody to uh, um, I Will Survive. Oh, okay. And then we got a call from the lawyer's office saying, no, you can't do that. That would be considered a secondary boycott. So I had to wind up doing the song in concert for UFCW and became a big hit and was one of the songs of my first hit. So I'd like to do a little piece of that acapella. Okay, great. Right. Okay. So at the time, the workers were making $6.25 an hour. Mm -mm. So it goes, first time I got paid, I was petrified, kept thinking I could never live on 625. I thought I'd earn a living wage when the stock began to rise, but I was wrong. And then I tried to get along. I broke my back, picked up the pace. I go to work, do as I'm told without a say about my fate. I should have asked the CEO with all the guards around the door to share the millions that he makes while the rest of us stay poor. Oh, let's go. Let's turn the page. I joined the union so I could make a living wage. You corporate bosses tell the workers they are great. We agree. Now we want more, but we can't wait. Oh, no, 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 I, I can't survive. Oh, without a living wage, I don't know how I will get by. I've got all these bills to pay, even though I work all day and I can't survive. I can't survive. Hey, hey. And that was a really big hit for us. Hey, well, there you go. <laughs> I will survive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's pull John in here. And uh, John, what do you have for us? Uh, I thought I would focus on even younger folks than Lynn Marie is talking about. Uh, <laughs> um, Sycon, as, as I mentioned earlier, and I have been friends and writing partners for decades. And we were writing a series of albums on the four seasons. And uh, the first two just came out like that. We said, let's do some, let's do some hard. And I said, how about if we write an album of union songs for kids? Oh my. And, and, <laughs> and I said, well, let's, let's break it down and in, into the various, um, tenets uh, beliefs of unionism and i said okay how about this we can't use the word union anywhere that would be first any and foremost. of the songs yeah, yeah. Okay. and they have to be they have to be fun so this is one called the principle oh we wanted to have us a school fair you know the kind that they have almost anywhere. I was elected to talk to the principal just to see what she would say. She said, it's a fine idea, but please understand it takes experience and people and a good plan. 
And I really don't see how we could manage it now. Thanks for visiting. Now have a nice day. Well, I went to the class and I let them know that the principal had quite politely told us no. They said, they sent Jessie and I to give it one more try to see if she would see us as a pair. And she, so when we got to the office, she said, fine. I agreed to meet with each of you one at a time. I looked at Jessie with a grin. He looked at me, I looked at him. And then we, together we decided what was fair. And we said, thank you, no. We don't think so. We came here together as a team. What one can't do, you try again with two, cause you're never really lonesome as you see. Well, she still said no, and when we went back, the whole class decided on a different track. We talked to all the rooms and grades, all the teachers and the aides, all the janitors and cooks were on our side. And when the whole school gathered on the front lawn and the principal saw what was going on, she said, I will agree to meet a group of three to discuss this matter now. Please come inside. And we said, thank you, no, we don't think so. We came here together as a team. What one can't do, you try again with two, and if two can't score, you come back with many more, cause you're never really lonesome as you see. And she said, oh, oh, I just didn't know we'll have the best darn fair you've ever seen. What one can't do, you try again with two, and if two can't score, you come back with many more. If a group can act as one, you'll be surprised what can be done, because you're never really lonesome as you see. go <laughs> it was and that we actually did a whole album and it was one of my many grammy losing albums <laughs> but actually actually nominated and i was proud yeah. to be there when ella jenkins won oh. a grammy wow for one of her albums and she so yeah. You know, you you bring up a first of all, it's a that's a brilliant song, and and the idea of you know um, you know getting around the whole uh, issue that um, we are all, we are so often asked to solo up to represent ourselves, uh, breaking us apart away from what union is all about, right? About community is all about. And uh, I know, uh, John, do you have anything that you'd like to talk to, to ask uh, Lynn Marie or, or vice versa? Where, where can I get whatever you eat for breakfast? Uh, it's called, it's in the box of cereal called G-O-D. <laughs> <laughs> People ask me all the time and I've, I said, you know, that. If I could uh, bottle it and sell it, I would be a trillionaire. And then I decided, you know, maybe this year I will write me a little recipe book, little booklet mm -hmm. on how, you know, I might not be able to put it in a bottle, but I can't. There is a formula to attitude, energy, and faith that kind of go together. So if I could put that little in a cookbook, I, I don't think I'll do that. Well, and I... And I really appreciate the the uh, moniker that someone gave you is that you're the modern Joe Hill, because oh, thank you. I'm, I'm a longtime student of that, the old Swede. And one of the things that was really inspiring about his approach to the music that I think a lot of musicians and writers could really learn from is he was the ultimate utilitarian writer. Yeah. Hmm. He wrote hmm. for... He didn't write for the ages. He wrote right. for those workers in that strike at that time and completely customized it. It was the most generous thing. Mm. I mean, he, he wasn't trying to be famous. Um, and it, it's this, to the yeah. service of, of inspiring and energizing the, uh, the workers. And, and I, I can only imagine 
how much fun you are on the picket line. <laughs> you know, both of you are often with your experience coming into situations where there's a lot of anger, a lot of animosity, a lot of frustration. Uh, would you talk a little bit about dealing with what you face uh, coming into situations that might, you know, be really at a point so intractable uh, between, you know, workers and management and, um, and just kind of uh, how you have had to deal with uh, that kind of energy, how, how you approach music in that way? Well, that's the beautiful thing about music. You know, it, it's a ministry. You know, okay. I see it as a ministry, one of my ministries. And it just has that way of penetrating these layers and complexities of, of people. It Music hits you where you are. And then from there, if you have a message, insidious like we do it, it sneaks in. It gets inside of you. And then it, it disarms them. And I find that it gives me an opportunity. I see them like the candle and I'm the flame and we're exchanging this energy. And by the time I'm finished, they've been primed and they're open and they're ready mm. for me to give them something or something they may want to share with me. And that it, it's through that, through that means that I've been able to uh, communicate and, and quill some of my frustrations and some of my, uh, it's been some of my victories and in inroad to uh, some positivity. Yeah. How about you, John? Exactly, and I think. Well, it's I I do it in a similar way. I, you know, my grandfather used to remind me, "You're given two ears and one mouth, and if you use those organs in that basic proportion, you'll probably be all right." So the first thing uh, that I do when I come into a situation is I do I I ask a lot of questions. I, I listen uh, more than I talk. Um, mm, I remember mm -hmm, a number yeah. of years ago, um, there was a, there was a, a, you try to figure out how to be useful. Yeah. Because <laughs> no matter what your job is, that everybody wants to be useful, whether you're a deliver the mail or put out fires or teach the kids or spray the crops, you want to be useful. And sometimes it's, it's it's getting out of the way. Um, quick story. Uh, when I, I would begin all my Alaska tours in Cordova, Alaska, which is in Prince William Sound, and it's the Fisher, Fishermen's Union there, the Cordova District Fishermen United, would bring me in. In 1989, on Good Friday, the, the Exxon Valdez impaled itself on Bly Reef. Mm -hmm. And it was the fishermen who went out and began booming the oil three days before the government showed up. Wow. So the, a, a month later, they were having this thing called Prince William Sound Day, and they wanted me to come up and play for it. So, of course, I went. And, and on the way up, I thought, now here's a bunch of people who are really heartbroken. Their livelihood has just been taken away from them. They are pissed off, and they're exhausted. I'll bet they would like to have an opportunity to laugh. Yeah. Hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I took a big chance because comedy is a risk. And I stood up and I went, uh, folks know you read about it in the paper, or perhaps you saw the footage on TV, how the tanker cracked and the sea ran black. Cause it's time for, it's time for some compassion, don't you see? Well, hell, the fishing lane, the shipping lane was only 10 miles wide. Fishermen, you ought to understand. And when the captain asked for one on the rocks, well, the third mate followed his command. We're gonna change the name to the Black Sea, gonna turn it to a tourist spot. And when we're done, we'll give it back to the people of Alaska to show what man hath wrought. Pass along the cost to the one who lost, cause you know it's the American way. Erect a neon sign for the rest of time, brought by Exxon USA. <laughs> and, it, and it went on, and I knew, I knew it was a risk. But one thing I've learned from working it, it, with labor struggles, 
Go, whether you're going into P9 or you're going up to J Main when the, when the paper mill workers were on <laughs> strike or you're walking the line with the American flight attendants, um, is humor is a great weapon. Yeah, it is. Because it, it, dis, it, it disarms the powerful. Yeah, yeah. And it proves that the emperor in truth has no clothes. Yeah. And what what bosses and corporations and companies and cops and everybody use as their power is fear. Mm -hmm. And it's just like when Jamila Jones wrote the best verse of We Shall Overcome. She sang as a 14 year old girl during a police raid at Highlander. She sang We Are Not Afraid. Yes, she did. Yes. Yeah. And and we won then. Yeah. Because if, if people who are using fear and power as their weapon realize we're not afraid of them. We're not afraid. And to be able to sing together, to be able to laugh together, it's, it's like a USO show, <laughs> you yeah. know, really. Um, and you want to give, give, give strength and encouragement and support to the people on the front lines. Yes, definitely. And you can, you can do that in power plays. You know, Lynn Marie has a, a, a video, uh, a couple of videos up on YouTube. I wanted to get one uh, a minute or so of one of those in so people can see uh, what can happen in a crowd when you yeah. go into your act. So uh, Annette, would you, uh, you bring up that video? Get rid of it. We earned what we've got, sisters. Defend it. Or only back freedom to control us. We need justice to restore us. Power in numbers can't ignore us. Sisters, join us. Women vote right now. Oh, we're sending out this urgent SOS. When it's women issues, women know what's best. Oh, we can't go back to how things used to be. Down here, that is that is bad. <laughs> yeah, I took that from Lizzo. <laughs> now you know we yeah, have. You got Elise in there. Yeah. <laughs> we know that we have uh, elections coming from now until 2024, and uh, so how how is your music helping to serve the labor and the union and uh, and all of these issues that? Uh, you know, we are trying to bring to the people. Um, what do you, what do you, what do you got cooking for us? Well, I I have a piece out now. It's called uh, "Women Vote," mm -hmm. and it talks about uh, you know women being the largest uh, group of, of of voters, and you know how uh, one woman in the beginning said she turned it upside down, and all of us together collectively should be able to turn it around. Uh, and it's just about uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a get out the vote piece, you mm -hmm. know, just encouraging people to, uh, you know, register to vote, and then get out there with the power of our feet and get that get that thing done. You I'm going to ask. What we have to do is is use this time that we have right now to talk, educate the importance of of voting. It's it's the most it's the biggest weapon we have right now. So what can what can I'm going to ask each of you just to share a thought or two about what our folks can do um, for labor rights, uh, for, you know, helping unions to get the message out as, you know, uh, we find ourselves consistently not only here, but globally, you know, fighting this uh, this assault on yes. on workers rights. Find one of these join an organization, volunteer make donations, go to the meetings. Uh, as I said, do some voter registration, uh, get, educate yourselves about, you know, what's needed and look at some of these really wonderful, powerful organizations that are out there and just call and find out where you can be of help. You know, it's, 
it's everywhere. <laughs> you can you can do something, you know, and I think voting is the least that we can do. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's one day going in the booth. Yeah. But we need to be doing a lot more. John. Well, I live in Georgia, which has oh, been boy. a very exciting place oh, for boy. elections over the last four years. Uh, one of my very favorite jokes I heard was on the front page of the Atlanta Journal Constitution back in January of 2021. Said, black man and a Jew walk into a bar and the bartender says, hello, senators. <laughs> <laughs> Who of us so would have believed that it was possible? Actually, tell me about it. Uh, well, Stacey Abrams uh, has been doing great work here in Georgia for, for many, many years getting, you know, Georgia has the largest voter turnout in the South, and it's still just barely above 50%. Right, mm. right. One of, the great, one of the great places we can go is, is with young people. There are over 200 Starbucks that have voted to be union. Wow. None of them have a contract yet. So whenever I go into a Starbucks and, and I see Black Lives Matter and the different things that they all have on their T-shirts now, mm -hmm. issued mm -hmm. by the company, mm -hmm. you know, I will say, well, right, so are you guys, you know, you've heard, you've heard this. Uh, are, is Workers' Lives Matter on there? That'd be really interesting. You know, so you start up a conversation. What do you think about these other places that are doing this? Isn't it interesting the changes that have happened in our state mm -hmm. in the last just three years? Did you right. ever imagine, like Reggie said, did you ever imagine this would happen? Well, imagine. Yeah. Continue to imagine. Get to work. Support yeah. your fellow workers in these other stores, even if your store isn't going to go. And for those of us who, who frequent these places, whether it be Apple, Amazon, uh, Starbucks, let them know. Let them know because it's a scary time. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, these companies are, are doing incredibly borderline illegal uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, harassment of organizers. So for, for a customer just to say, hey, good luck with your organizing effort. Or here's my card. If you guys ever think about doing anything, let me know. Because even the most friendly, I mean, my son is on the, or, the Democratic National Committee is organizing. Wow. Really? It's never been organized. <laughs> no, you're kidding. Working. He's on the organizing. He's on the organizing committee. And he said, well, this ought to be easy. I said, <laughs> don't ever assume. No. Oh, no ever assume i've been involved in campaigns where you thought well this is going to be easy and sometimes they're the most difficult so you need one another you need ways in which you can you can express solidarity you need to go out you know in it in the atlanta area when iatsi goes out the musician union goes out mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. walk their lines they come walk out. and that's what and you know hey modern day joe hill he was, he was all about industrial unionism, you know? Um, it's crazy that in the entertainment industry, we have the musicians in one union, the singers in another union, the, the recording engineers in another union, the, 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 the actors in another union. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really crazy. And, and people can cross one another's picket lines. We need to understand and we need to educate the public that no, when you when you decide not to cross a picket line, you are not making a decision. You are not taking sides. When you cross a picket line, you are absolutely taking sides. Right, when right. you don't cross a picket line, you're saying, you guys work this out. I'm not, you know, you don't, you know, it's it's a matter of social responsibility. If you want this to settle, give the workers their power by not crossing the line. Yes. John, you have another song. We have civics. time for we have time for a, a, one more song from each of you, and um, we'd like to get another song in. And then, of course, um, for the 
for those of you who would like to stick around, uh, we can uh, jump into our another Zoom room and for questions and answers. So if anyone out there has some questions that they would like to ask our panelists, you'll have an opportunity to ask them yourself uh, right after these last two songs. Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier the, the power of taking workers' words and letting them, letting them speak for themselves. So a number of years back, the workers at the Hormel meatpacking plant in Austin, Minnesota, went on strike. These are the people who make Spam, who make Dinty, no, Dinty Moore beef stew, a bunch of other stuff. Um, and I got to be friends with them. And whenever I was playing in the Twin Cities, I would drive down to Austin and play for them. Hmm. And afterwards, we were, would repair to Lefty's Bar. I swear, that's the name of the bar. <laughs> Lefty's Bar. <laughs> Which they claimed had the levelest pool table in Minnesota, and they had nothing but Melon Camp and Springsteen on the <laughs> jukebox. Blue and collar all the way. cold beer at affordable prices. I was sitting there uh, hanging out with some friends, and this woman came along put a pitcher of beer on the table and two glasses, and she told me her story. And this is it. You know what it's like to work in there. Oh, you start snatching guts and Close scraping calls. hair. Sure, I've had a few. Each month you figure one or two, but you punch the clock and you give what's due, and you learn more about spam than you wish you knew. Do you know what it's like when you first talk back? Oh, you've worked like hell and you ain't been slack. But the only thing they understand rolls down the line in four inch cans. So you learn to push when you think you're burned, but you're going back on all you've learned. Like, don't rock the boat, don't make a scene, don't draw attention. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what it's like to get the call? There's a strike vote down at the Union Hall. So you load up the kids and you drive to town, but you ride without talking the whole way down. Because you're thinking about the days at home, long afternoons when you're there alone. And you're not the first. And when the kids ask why, you say we might not win, but we'll damn well try. Do you know what it's like to walk the line at 10 below in the winter time? Well, the sheriff and the National Guard will push you around in your own front yard and the cars roll by with their shouts and stares till you think no one in the whole town cares. And you say, I wasn't brought up this way. What's happening to my life? What will my children say? They think I'm just a mother and a wife. Mm. Do you know what it's like to get arrested in your own hometown? In the broad daylight with your children around and you feel the steel close on your wrist and your heart and your hands are clenched to fists and you lie in your cell and you wrestle all night, so full of doubt, but so sure you're right. Because you learn, don't break the laws, just mind the rules. Jail is for criminals and luckless fools. And you know what it's like when you think you're out there all on your own. And then you suddenly find that you're not alone. Because they're in the papers, on TV, little folks who seem just like me, little folks who find they're hurled into the fires of this world where they're forged to silver and they're beaten to gold till they find they have some strength untold. So I'll take their hand and I'll stand the line and we'll rise to battle one more time. Hmm. Wow. 
Wow, wow. Wow. Thanks to that woman. Thanks. Thanks. Woman. Yeah. People telling their own story. Wow. During the pandemic, I, I wrote a song and it was inspired by uh, a phrase that I read from a meat worker, uh, I believe in North Dakota, who said, when we're dead and buried, our bones will still hurt every day. Mm. Lynn Marie, can you take us out with a song? Yeah, let me do you. a piece. Uh... <laughs> That was fantastic, John. My hairs are standing up on my, my arms. Uh, this is done to, uh, like I said, I like to try to do something from every genre. And this is from uh, Clyde McFadder and the Drifters. We need our contract. Economic times of uncertainty. Organized labor is in a battle for its very security. With the imminent threat of social security privatization, loss of jobs, distrust, and bad labor relations, we must realize that in our hands, we hold the key to our destiny. The work to be done begins and ends with you and me. I have faith that like the phoenix, the labor movement will rise out of the ashes of old, reborn, renewed, and recommitted to fight against injustice toward workers everywhere. When the contract's up and it's time to negotiate, but the boss says no way, we'll just give you one you're gonna hate. We need a contract, and that's the truth. We've got to have a decent contract for me and you. Everybody say we need our contract. We need our contract. Won't you negotiate? <laughs> Before it's too late yeah, to protect our rights. <laughs> oh, we don't want to fight. We need, we need our contract. contract. All the years in the shop, we never thought things would get this bad. And though they started this war, they're gonna wish they never had. Now all the bosses think they can bring the workers to their knees, but they're wrong because we're resilient. <laughs> but they don't realize without a contract, there will be no peace. We need a contract. And here's the deal, here's the deal. There will be no cooperation until one is signed and sealed. Do you hear us, Mr. Boss Man? There will be no cooperation until a contract is signed and sealed. Thank you. <laughs> Cutchin. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Reggie. It's been so oh, 
It has been so enlightening, so inspiring, and uh, I'd like to thank you both for taking the time. And for those of you who would like to stick around, you look in the chat and you will see the link to our after performance discussion. Uh, you can come and ask questions of our guests. Uh, if you cannot stay, we are, thank you for joining us for this hour of power. And uh, we encourage you to get involved, get active. Uh, we need a contract here in America for equal rights and for equal access. And so it's up to all of us to, as community, put up that fight. Uh, we thank you at Living Legacy for your generosity again. We encourage you to go on the website, livinglegacypilgrimage.org, and uh, view the other programs, the other webinars that uh, you may have missed. And this one will be available to you uh, in about a week or so. Um, so you can uh, recommend to friends that they watch it, and they will also be enlightened and uh, inspired by what we've seen here tonight. So I'm going to say thank you so very much again to John McCutcheon and to Lynn Marie Smith. Uh, join us in the after uh, discussion room and uh, hope to see you there. Thank, thank you so you much. Neil. Thank you, Annette.